April woke up to a knock on the door. It was Sean, one of the neighbors who helped April carry Eva's body. He was smiling, but there was something off about him. As she looked down, she saw that he was holding a knife. He threatened her to leave the building, and she realized he was serious, so she backed away through the corridor and left the building quickly. Luckily, she managed to grab her backpack before leaving, as the book recommended to keep all valuables in it at all times. Still, she didn't have much. Thousand dollars in cash, extra socks and underwear, a multi-tool, duct tape, the survival guide, water bottle, tampons, various energy bars and snacks, floss, two little flashlights and four lighters. But worse than that, she didn't have anywhere to go. She was all alone, scared out of her mind and completely lost as she sat in a coffee shop and wrote in her book. She read a passage from the book about the viral pandemic. As she read, April started getting suspicious about merch. He seemed to know a little bit too much. But April had to move. She started moving uptown from Eva's place at Grand and Wooster. She had traveled for a while until she found a shelter all the way in Hell's Kitchen. It wasn't much and it was overcrowded, but at least she had a roof over her head. She got through the night okay, though she slept holding her backpack. She didn't have a blanket, but it wasn't cold, as there were at least 100 other people in the room. The morning after, the shelter provided her and the other refugees with some water, bread, peanut butter and vitamins. Not the omelette she dreamed of, but calorie-wise, it did the job. The shelter also had a radio and people clustered around him, waiting for updates from the DCD and Sarah. That morning, the DCD announced that the smallpox strain that was going around was engineered. Even President Waller, who was presumed dead, but probably hidden in a bunker in Washington DC, gave a brief radio address to confirm it. The DCD also confirmed that the virus was spread through the dollar bills, probably done on Black Friday to maximize exposure. In a short message from the Capitol on page 122 of the survival guide, there is a hidden clue. If we take the first letter of every sentence and lay out the letters next to each other, it spells out avoid any cash. And now we find out money carried the dollar flu. Pretty suspicious. Merch knew about the green poison, but how? How could he have known? We don't know. April doesn't know. And that's where it ends for now. It was time for April to get rid of her money. Not much later, April and everyone else was kicked out of the shelter. But this time she had an idea of where she could stay. Bill had a co-worker who lived in Hell's Kitchen, Miko Hirasaki. April met her at an office party about a year ago and April decided to look her up. Though traveling was dangerous, with a huge explosion even going off along the way, she managed to find the apartment. She didn't expect anything good to happen, but it did. Miko was there and she recognized April and let her in. Miko lived with her boyfriend Drew, a nurse, and Miko herself was a writer for the New York News Media, as we can see here that she wrote an article on Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss. After the last couple of days, I didn't expect anything good to happen. But it did. Miko was there. She recognized me and she let me in. They live on the third floor and still have electricity. I'm writing now by the light of an actual electrical bulb. <laughs> Amazing how quickly that starts to seem unusual. Miko's partner Drew is a nurse. He's got some incredible stories about the first days of the bug. Neither of them can believe he's still alive. Every so often, while he's telling his stories, Miko will just reach out and touch him, like she wanted to make sure he was really there. I wish I could reach out and touch Bill. That night she actually had a warm meal for the first time in a long time. They heard on the radio that the explosion from before was someone trying to tap a gas line in Chinatown. But at least tonight, April was safe. The next days, April found herself scavenging the city and found herself at a park in Midtown to find some peace and quiet. But as she sat there on a bench, a lot of noise started building up around her. As she walked down to the southern part of the park, she noticed that crews were blocking off 5th Avenue with containers and barriers. They were putting up a wall and she was on the wrong side of it, in the middle of the dark zone. As she approached, the crews wouldn't let her pass, leading her to worry about how she was going to escape, how she was going back to her apartment. 
Freaking out about being stuck in the most dangerous part of the city, she didn't know what to do. Luckily enough, not much later she found a Red Cross ambulance driver, who she managed to bribe with her last money, effectively getting rid of her last cash. In the back of the truck were three other people. They looked at her as if she was a piece of meat, though this was not the first time she realized that they could do anything they wanted and nobody would stop them. But there was a fourth person in the ambulance. No uniform, but he did have a gun in his hand and he looked so calm as if any trouble that was about to come didn't bother him. It was already the next day and as she got smuggled out of the dark zone she was dropped off at 23rd Avenue. She kept walking south until she reached the lap of Bill. She hadn't been there since Bill's murder two weeks earlier, so this must have been tough for her. Gathering all of her courage, she entered the office to collect Bill's things and possibly find a clue on who would have wanted him dead. On his desk there was a comic book card drawing of Bill with writing from her husband mentioning how neither snow nor rain will stop Dr. Liu. Dr. Liu? Was that the doctor that was in the van the day Bill got murdered? Before being able to finish her thought, she heard someone moving around in the building. Or it might have been the wreckage. Anyway, she quickly left the building and went to a food truck in front of Flat Iron, where she would meet Nico and Drew. We're talking liquid gold here. I could take this across town and get twice what you're offering. Lady, be my guest. Be lucky if someone doesn't shoot you and take it. Come on, man. We're starving. Please. <sighs> Fine. But only because you're pretty and I don't need to see any more pretty dead girls in the street. Pound of chicken and 12 tortillas. Final offer. And hot sauce? Lady. I don't like this. I know, baby. But what choice do we have? We're lucky we even found that gas. A night went by and it's already the 18th of December. April decided to go to the post office on 8th Avenue because of the comic card she found at Bill's lap. Bill knew something and wanted April to know. She was sure of it. As April arrived she saw a riot happening in front of her. It was rumored that the CDC and Sarah were holding back vaccines and food. The Army and National Guard, better known as the JTF at this point, tried to calm down the crowd. It's unclear where it went wrong. But someone got carried away and a mob went crazy as the JTF started throwing out tear gas and the gunfire started. It was pure chaos. April first managed to hide out as she was puking and after some of the gunfire settled she quickly ran as long and fast as she could until she had to puke again. Finally she managed to get back to Miko and Drew's apartment but sleeping that night would be hard as she kept seeing all the dead people though eventually she managed to fall asleep. It's the 19th and April was unsure if she should tell Miko and Drew about her story, about the whole conspiracy including Merch, Bill and the doctor. Merch knowing about the dollar flu and the toxic money couldn't be a coincidence. December 20th. April and Drew started to make plans for the long term. April shared some of Merch's ideas. Drew mentioned that there were two condo towers nearby within a block of their apartment. He hasn't seen anyone in the buildings as they're completely dark at night. However, April was hesitant because the survival guide specifically mentioned that high rises should be avoided as they are death traps if you run into the wrong people. Drew agreed, but said that they wouldn't stay there, go in later day, spend the night looking around and leave at first light. He was convinced we would find supplies in there. They couldn't come to an agreement so they postponed the idea for now. No. December 21st, April was thinking of the doctor. Whatever the three of them would do about the high-rise plan, she must see the doctor anyway and find out what he knows about Bill. That note on the back of the card meant something. Bill might have been murdered because of the work of the doctor. Still, April was hesitant to go back at the post office, Grand Central or Hudson Yard because of the crowds and escaped convicts. Later, April started thinking. As great as her stay with Miko and Drew was, she wanted to find a place of her own. Merch advised caching supplies at different locations, so if something gets stolen, you always have a place to go to. And April was thinking she should do that herself, perhaps in the near future. It's D-Day, 22nd of December. Drew, Miko and April have scoped out the building, looked for fire exit, and it doesn't look like anyone was in the condos. 
they had decided to loot the building that evening. Later that day, it was already getting dark. They decided to enter the building through the loading dock door. Drew had a crowbar if they needed to pry it open. After some prying and rumbling, they managed to open the door. It was all dark and spooky. Miko and April had a bad feeling about it and wanted to skip out on the plan. In hindsight, this might have not been a bad idea. 